Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to talk about metadata. It's my opinion that many photographers underutilize metadata, and the reason why they underutilize it is because they don't totally understand how important it is. So by the end of this video, I hope you understand the importance of metadata. The first question I probably should answer is, what is metadata? Well, when you take a picture, any picture with any camera, your camera writes some information to the file. It will write exposure information, the camera used, the lens used, um, the location maybe if your camera is GPS uh, capable. All that is part of metadata. There's a lot more to it though. And to look at metadata, you would go to the library module of Lightroom and you would go to the right panel and open up the metadata tab. And you can see with the default view, you're going to look at a select number of fields of metadata. This isn't everything. Metadata is really very um, feature rich. There's a lot of stuff you could add to an image. Now for he looking at it here, you can see the camera info and exposure info is here. This is edited or added by your camera and it's not easily editable. So you can't come in and change the lens used or the exposure or anything like that here. That again is added by your camera, but there is a lot of stuff you could do with metadata and a lot of it in my opinion is very important. Just to look at the views, if you look at this drop down, the default view as I mentioned is showing you select fields. You could look at different fields. So if I want to just look at any metadata that was written by a plugin, so if I sent this image to a plugin and that plugin entered some data, it would be there. DNG, if this were a DNG file, it would have the DNG info here, the version and compatibility. EXIF is the data that is written by your camera. As I mentioned, most of this is not editable, but you would see. Now you have the exposure information, the focal length I shot at, the effective focal length because I used a crop sensor camera, exposure bias, exposure info, all that's here. Nikon D500, the serial number, all that is written here. The only fields you really could edit is you could put a comment. You could put some GPS info because this camera is not GPS compatible, but if I knew the GPS coordinates, I could add it here. Um, the altitude, direction, which way I was shooting north, south, whatever, could all get entered with this EXIF info here. Now the next one, and probably in my opinion, as important as EXIF data is IPTC data. And we're going to skip a view, jump down here to this IPTC section. And you can see this is all your info, your name, your address, uh, your contact info, your website info, your phone number, um, email, copyright info. This is important because if your image is out there in the wild and someone stumbles across it and they want to use it, they could look here and see what the copyright status is. It's copyrighted or it's public domain. Um, if it's public domain, you're giving people permission to use it. If it's copyrighted, they better contact you or they could have a lawsuit on their hands. So you could put all this info here. And we're going to talk a little more extensively about this info in a second. But let's go with the views some more. Now I skipped that one view. It was EXIF and IPTC. And that's just the EXIF data at the top and all this IPTC stuff below it. This is the view I normally use. I often like to come in here and see something about the exposure or lens used or something like that. And I could see it very easily. And I like to make sure that I have my IPTC data correct. IPTC extension is if you had a model shoot and you used a model, you would put model information here. You also could put like agency information that you used for the shoot, other information about that specific model shoot could all be entered in here. That's called IPTC extension. Large caption. A lot of times you post an image online, you like it to have a caption. You could enter that here. Location info. Now these are just select views or select fields from the other views. 
So this is just location info that is um, from other views. You could come in here and just look at where this was shot or edit the info here. Minimal view. This is just like the actual file name, a star rating, if it had any star rating, a caption, copyright. A quick describe, just minimal, minimal info again, and you could come in here and just edit a few of the fields. Video, if this were a video, you could put very specific video information here, engineer, composer, stuff like that. Below that is Lightroom Instagram, um, mainly Instagram. If you're sharing the image on Instagram, you could put hashtags mainly here and a caption. Uh, GPS info might come in handy too. That could be added as well. But as I mentioned, I mainly use the EXIF and IPTC view. Now, with this, you could come in here and you could go image by image and add some info here. So I could put some contact info here. The creator is me, right? So I could put my name here. Then I could put my title and all that good stuff. So I could enter all this on an image to image basis. A faster way is I could enter it on one image and then I could select the other images I want it to be entered into. So let's just pretend that I filled in every single field, not just my name. So I could click on this image that has all this info. Then I could select all the other images that I want this info copied to. And I'll just, uh, let's say, I'm going to hold the command key in and just select a bunch of images. Um, if you have a PC, you would hold the control key in. You could select them all too. Um, whatever. And then right here where it says auto sync, you would click on this. And you'll see this dialog box comes in. And you've got to tell it now what info do you want copied. Now, I, we're pretending I filled in all these fields, not just my name. So I would click right here, that checkbox, and I'm adding all of this. So all of that would get copied to all the selected images, and I would click Synchronize. So it would synchronize everything. Now, that's one way to do it. I'm going to cancel out of that. In my opinion, there's a better way. And that better way is to use a metadata preset. Now, you remember in previous videos where I imported images, I had a metadata preset. I called it my import preset. That preset contained all this data. And when I imported images, it automatically got put in every image I imported. And to me, in my opinion, that's the easiest way to do it. Now, you could do it after the fact. If you have several thousand images in your Lightroom library, we could create this preset, and then we could apply it to all the images that are already in our library, and then apply it to every image we import into our library in the future. So, let's talk about this preset. How do we create it? If you go up here to the top of the metadata tab, you'll see preset, and it says none. Now, I had that import preset before this video I deleted it so I could show you how to create one. What you want to do is click on this drop down and click on edit presets. And you'll see this box comes up. Now we're going to put in exactly what we want here. So I would put my address, I have my name already. So I put this um, address info in here. So I'm going to fill out all the fields I want field, filled out. I'm going to pause the video though while I do it. Um, and then when we come back, hopefully, you'll see all these fields filled out. Okay, I entered all the data that I want entered. Now, you could enter more data, less data. It doesn't matter. There's not a set way to do this. But I definitely want my copyright info in there. So I have my name. I have that the image is copyrighted. I'm reserving all rights. Then it, it's a copyright info URL. If you go to my website here, you'll see information about my copyright and the rights I reserve and how you could purchase my image. Um, my name, my address. I also usually put in my phone number, but for this video, because I don't want to crank calls, <laughs> I didn't add my phone number. I have my email address. I have my new website here, Online Photography Training. I have my job title. And that is the info I want in there. I don't need any of this other info. Of course, it's not a video. Um, keywords, 
to me are very specific to an image. Like if I have an image of a zoo animal, keywords would be different than an image of a landscape. So I don't see the, I, for my import preset, I don't need keywords. But you can create another preset for um, specific keywords. So if you have, if you shoot at a zoo a lot, a specific zoo, you could put keywords for that zoo here. And then if you shoot landscapes, you could have a different preset for landscapes, things like that. So that really is helpful and will save you a lot of time. So this is what I want in this import preset. So I'm going to click done. Save changes as new preset. I'm going to click basically save as and it's going to ask me for the name and I'm going to call this import preset. And then I'm going to click create. So now I have this import preset and if I want to add it to an image right here where it says preset, go to import preset and it automatically got entered. It's as simple as that. You don't have to hit save or anything like that. You can just click to the next image. Now, if you want to add it to more than one image, uh, select them all. I'm going to hit Command A to select them all because I have a Mac. If you, hit, if you have a PC, you'd hit Control A. So I'm selecting everything in this. It's actually a collection I'm in for the demonstration of this video. For demonstration purposes for this video, I have a collection. You could be in a folder. You could select all your images at once. It doesn't matter. Go up to preset, go to import preset. It adds all the info to now all these images. As you could see, as I click on one, and there it is, see, just click on odd images, and you could see it has all that info there. I didn't get my name. I must have screwed up. Well, this is a good way to show you. You could see how they don't have my name on them, but that first one probably does. Yes, that does. So I screwed up, but this is a good way to show you how to edit a preset. So we'll go up here to preset and we go to edit presets. And then this box comes up and then we go to our import preset. And I have my name there. Oh, I don't have my name here. I forgot to put it. So we'll add my name. Then we're going to click done. And then we're going to save changes to the preset, import preset, save. Yes, we want those saved. So now that preset is edited. So I could select all my images. And then I could go to import preset. And it's applying them to the images. And once that renders and shows, you could see there's my name now there. So it now fixed it. As I go through and you could see on every image my name is there and all that contact info is there. And after this video, to tell you the truth, I'm going to come in here and add my phone number. And then I'll have that preset edited with my phone number and I'll add that to all the images as well. So metadata is very important. I hope you could understand why it's important and why you would want this metadata with your image. One thing I should warn you. It's easy to strip metadata away from an image. Uh, if you upload an image to Facebook, Facebook strips all the metadata from an image. And I, I hate that. I think that's horrible. So your name, your address, your copyright info, gone. When you upload any image to Facebook. I'm sure there's other photo services that do the same thing, uh, but I know for a fact Facebook does it. I'm not sure of any others. Um, other, I know Flickr doesn't, so all your data stays there. I know, um, uh, let's see, I'm not sure about Instagram. Instagram is owned by Facebook, so I wouldn't be surprised if they stripped the metadata as well. If anyone knows specifically about different um, photo services and what how they treat metadata, please post it in the comments below. I'd like to know myself. So metadata to me is very important. Um, I strongly suggest that you create an import preset. That way, when you someday import images, if you go up into the import dialog and you're importing images, um, what you would do is apply during import, you have those two uh, types of presets, develop settings, which normally I don't do, that actually processes your image, but metadata, that import preset now that I just created, all those fields will get added to the image as they're being imported. So I strongly suggest you do that and make sure that your images at least have this level of protection. Again, 
it's limited. It's not going to save the world, but at least you have that info in there. So that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.